kind of go about getting books with illustrations and graphics into ebook form, but it takes more time and it takes more money. Yeah, but it can be done, but it's just more difficult. So, um, but the bottom line is that um, if your book isn't in an ebook form, you're probably losing out on sales because the market is there, and um, we automatically include ebooks with all of our book packages. So um, it's it's kind of included. You do all the conversions, like to Moby and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, but again, if you're shopping around for publishing, self-publishing companies in particular, make sure you know what they're including in their pricing. So not every company will include ebooks; they'll include it as an add-on and make you pay additional fees. But um, so just be sure what you're what you're buying, but and make sure that your book is in, in an ebook form at the end of the day. So a market you don't want to overlook. Um, and by far, the most popular e-readers are Kindle and Nook. And, but you can get an app, an app on your phone, on your tablet, wherever, to read any of it. So, and that's what I have for you today. So questions? Anybody have questions for me? You mentioned seminars a couple of times. Can you tell before about what those are? Yes. Um, we are doing a, two seminars later on this year um, throughout uh, Carroll and Baltimore County. One is, as I mentioned, taking your books to the film stage. So um, it's basically a detailed analysis of how to take your book and get it to a point where it's um, available to studios to option for you. And then we do go into detail what happens at each stage after that, but the, prime, the biggest hurdle for most authors is getting it from the book to a script where they can market and sell it to uh, film studios. So that's what primarily that is. And then we talk, and then we have another one about self-publishing and the benefits of self-publishing, um, why the market is continually moving to self-publishing, and um, you know we don't we don't spend as much time with traditional as I did today, and we talk more about marketing aspects. And, and once your book is published all the different marketing things you can do, such as websites and blogs and, and personal appearances and that sort of thing to market your book and get it out there. So those are the two that we also give. And you can go to our, our website and see those. What specifically are you doing in your companies to get your authors uh, more market-driven? Um, we, we give them the information. Now, I can't stand over there and beat them with a ruler and say, get out there and sell your books. But I do give them the information to market their books. Uh, marketing is, in, for most self-publishing companies, those are options. Um, there are the core packages that authors will purchase to get their book published and out on the market and into the distribution networks. And then marketing is an optional thing. And marketing is so... Um, specific to a person because everyone has a different set of skills and so depending on what the author's set of skills is will depend on what op marketing options they want to choose from. Not every author is comfortable standing up and talking in front of a group of people or um, they don't have any uh, desire to write a blog. <laughs> you know, so everybody's skill level is different and at different places so there's a variety of packages that they can choose from. The biggest thing is that most authors don't even have the information they need to make the best decision as to what marketing should be done. So, um, you know, there are blogs, there are websites, you know, the social media aspect is probably the biggest one these days, um, but there are a variety of things that you can do, to, and each one is different. And what are you doing? Not in your self-publishing, but in the other... For, for, for my book? For your or for, for, for the your publishing. Company. For my company, I'm for standing here in front of you. <laughs> no, for your authors, what are you doing to drive the books that are not in the self publishing? Oh, in the self, oh, I see what you're saying. Yes, typically we do two things. Number one, we send out a press release announcing the book's release. And then we also send out at least a dozen copies for review. And those are the two things we do at a minimum for self published authors. I mean, for traditional published authors, yes, those two things that we do. And those are actually written into our agreements with them. So, and then anything else that they want to do above and beyond, of course, is up to them, but uh, those things we do at a minimum for our traditional authors. 
How many books do you publish a year? Um, with Old Line Publishing, we are publishing about a dozen a year, and through Maple Creek, we are publishing about 24 to 30. Yeah, we're doing about, about one every other week. And about how, how many are successful in your opinion? Well, and successful is going to be, how would you define successful? Well, how many do they sell? How many do they sell? Um, we have authors that are selling routinely. Um, some of them are selling 100 to 150 books a month. Others are selling none. Are so. there any big names? Any names you yeah. recognize? Any names yeah. you could do? That no, don't have any big names. We're a small publisher, and uh, we're locally owned. And uh, I wish, I wish I could tell you that Stephen King was our author. Or, I wish uh, you could too. <laughs> <laughs> he did bring examples, so there are yeah. books over oh, there. We have, so here's a, a, you know, we, we published over 200 books over the last 10 years. So um, it's not, we're not definitely, definitely not new to the game. Um, and certainly we would love to have uh, one author really take us to the next level. Um, the unfortunate thing is that we are vying in competition with about 10,000 other small publishing companies um, just here on the East Coast. So um, the competition is really, really tough. Authors have a lot of choices, uh, especially when it comes to self-publishing these days. Um, and so, you know, yeah, those, those, those few big authors that we mentioned earlier, they're, they're few and far between. Most authors are not going to ever see that. What's your mix, nonfiction to fiction? And your um, I was looking at that the other day. We're just, our, about 60% is fiction, about 40% is nonfiction. Mm -hmm. We were doing that just the other day. Yeah. Uh, you've been very reserved on selling your company, so but take a moment mm -hmm. to tell well, us. Well, yeah, I do that purposely because the goal of the seminar is really just to give you information. And so I don't make this a sales seminar, but um, you know, these days we do not promote um, old line publishing as much as we promote Maple Creek Media. We've tried over the last few, many years to find a, a profitable business model for our traditional publishing. We just haven't been able to really make it happen. So we've refocused all our efforts on the self-publishing, uh, Maple Creek Media, which has been very profitable for us and allowed us to stay in business over the years. We've also found, and I was, I was explaining to Catherine earlier, we found that the majority, all the authors that we have through Maple Creek are very happy and satisfied. And the authors that we have through our traditional end, not so much. And it really comes down to the expectations um, of authors that are coming through the various uh, portals here. So, Traditional authors have uh, a higher expectations than self-published authors do. So at the end of the day, um, you know, I have an author, I'll give you a couple of really ridiculous scenarios. I have an author who um, claimed that I had sold millions of his books and had never paid him a penny. So I tried to explain to him that over the course of his book, he's only sold about a dozen copies. <laughs> and, and that um, <clears throat> we don't typically issue checks less than $25, and his royalties had not gone even up to $12. <laughs> and so, um, so there really wasn't anything. But it's the expectation that he had in his head that his book was going to sell a million copies. And I think a lot of authors you know, understand, yes, I was where I would love to be, but it's not a realistic expectation. The realistic expectation is that when your book is out there on the market, it's going to sell 500 to 1,000 copies. That's a realistic expectation. Um, so then you have to make a decision as to whether your, in, your investment is worth it to you. Yes? How can an author, whether going through traditional or self-publishing, know how many copies are selling? Um, their publisher should be sharing that, but that how, information how with them. Publishers are doing that. Uh, well, I would I would say first you need to make sure you you get a reputable publisher. Um, I'm standing up here before you <laughs> with my business name and, and a face to, to everything I tell you. Uh, I place everything on my reputation. 
But there are companies out there that have awful reputations and they will cheat you. Um, I've had a number of authors who have said, you know, oh, um, I went to, you know, iUniverse and, and it was awful and they scammed me and I went to this company and I got scammed. And um, so we don't, you know, that's not something that I do. Uh, but you have to be careful about which publishing company you choose. Can you uh, see numbers on Amazon and Barnes and Noble? Numbers for publishing for that book. No, no, no. It, it Amazon has a very weird and um, a algorithm for generating a number they call placement. You know, so you can be in the millions, but it's an algorithm and it does not give you the number of sales. I think if you have um, an author. Author Central. Author Central, that's mm -hmm. what it is. If you have an account set up in Author Central, you may be able to go in there and see what has sold through Amazon, maybe. I'm not you sure. You can see, um, so I do have an account there. Okay. And you can see, if you have print books, they say that they can represent approximately 75% of the sales because it depends on the, the brick and mortar stores reporting to Amazon. If you have your book, like an ebook that you sold through Kindle, through Amazon's KDP specific, then you can see exactly how many ebooks you have. If you're using someone other than KDP, other than Amazon, to do your ebook, then you have to go to that ebook company in order to do it. And if you're using um, a company like Maple Creek, then I assume. Maple Creek has that information, but I don't know if you give that information to your authors or not. Or well, like, do they have access to those? Yeah. To those what we do, we don't, it's not something that you have access to with the push of a button. But every four months, we send out a detailed um, spreadsheet to every author indicating where their book sold and how much their book sold for. And there are, there are 